Jose Aldo and Alexander Volkanovsky are two legends of the game who came from the farthest of lands possible. But what if I tell you this? I see a deja vu here. What Volkanovsky is going through these days, we've all witnessed before with the King of Rio. Can we just talk about how eerily similar their paths have been? Don't trust me? Hear me out. First up, both started out as rising stars in their respective regions, eventually dominating the featherweight division in the UFC. One was from the favelas of Brazil, another came from the Australian beachside. Pride of their whole nation, they both became champions inside the UFC. They came in as an undefeated phenom and remained undefeated for a solid stretch, crafting an unmatched legacy for themselves. But then came the bombshell, a shockwave, a knockout heard loud and clear in the MMA ecosystem. What came next was unheard of, shocking knockout losses that changed everything for them. Now it seems like watching a movie on repeat and we're all left wondering when and how it ends. Well, the game has a funny way of biting you back in the Out of the favelas in Brazil, the consensus greatest featherweight of all time and one of Brazil's most beloved athletes and champions, Jose Aldo, the king of Rio. 20 consecutive wins and a title defense for the best featherweight in the world. Let's rewind the clock a bit and go back in time before we get to this deja vu. Jose Aldo was born in Manaus, Brazil, and the same old Brazilian rags to riches story from the favelas, you know the rest. A young Aldo was no stranger to tough times. He got into martial arts at a young age, showing off those natural athletic skills. By the time he hit his teens, he was already training in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and Muay Thai. At an age when the majority is just trying to figure out their high school drama, he was dominating inside the cage. On the flip side, we've got Alexander Volkanovsky, who started off as a rugby player in his teens. He was a big dude back then and weighed about 210 pounds in his rugby days, but after getting into mixed martial arts, he found his true calling. Imagine being a chunky kid playing rugby and then transitioning into a world-class MMA fighter. Talk about a change. It shows he wasn't afraid to switch things up. I actually started uh, MMA training as just a keep to keep fit while I was playing rugby league so I was a uh you know, that was when I was 214 pounds. Both fighters had this insane passion for MMA, but their paths were pretty different. Aldo was all about that Brazilian jiu-jitsu and striking combo, and his fights showed that spectacular skill and a penchant for the knockout. Volkanovski, on the other hand, is known for his wrestling and high-pressure style. The moment he stepped into the octagon, you knew he was coming for the dogfight. Now let's talk about their ascent to the UFC. Aldo made his mark by dominating the WEC before the UFC even had a featherweight division. He became the first champion when the WEC merged with the UFC and held that title for nearly 1900 days. Crazy, right? His reign included legendary fights against guys like Chad Mendes and the Korean Zombie. Then we have Volkanovski. This dude entered the UFC and made a name for himself with a relentless fighting style. He even fought Aldo, and let's just say Aldo gave him a tough fight, but eventually lost. So tough that Volk had to come out of the cage with an apparent injury. Ultimately, he snatched the featherweight title from Max Holloway in 2019. He defended that title multiple times, showcasing his elite wrestling and striking. His battles with Holloway and Ortega will be remembered for ages. Both fighters carved out their legacies in epic fashion. Aldo is often mentioned in the GOAT conversation. Multiple defenses, a striking masterclass, and the way he turned fighters into memes with those brutal leg kicks. His legacy is legendary, no doubt about it. And Volkanovski, he's not just resting on his laurels either. He's delivered epic performances against some of the toughest contenders, and that win streak is now part of his legacy. These two have built an empire in the featherweight division that few can match. But here's where the story gets a little darker. Both legends suffered shocking losses that reshaped their legacies. UFC 194 saw a moment that shook the whole MMA world. Aldo's infamous knockout by Conor McGregor, just 13 seconds and boom, Aldo's reign ended in an instant. That was a punch to the gut for Brazilian fans. Since then, Aldo has often struggled to find his footing, fighting like a gatekeeper rather than the champion we all knew. But here's the kicker, just like Aldo, Volkanovski faced his own downfall. After his incredible run, he stepped up to lightweight to challenge Islam Mahachev. The first fight was a neck-to-neck -neck matchup, but in the rematch, he got knocked out cold with a precise head kick by Islam. 
It felt like he stepped out of his zone and took a brutal hit. But then came the shocker, his knockout against El Matador. Ilya ragdolled him before shutting the lights out. So what's next for these legends? Both fighters face their highs and lows, and now they're navigating the what's next phase of their careers. Aldo's back in the UFC fold after retiring and dabbling in boxing. Meanwhile, Volkanovski is rumored to be considering sitting out for a while before even thinking to reclaim his spot at 145 pounds. The featherweight division is buzzing at this moment. Ilya is seen as a raging bull, and with his upcoming fight with Holloway, it's quite unclear where the belt will land once the matchup is done and dusted. Once loved by all, now a meme template. It's crazy how quickly the narrative can shift in MMA. Both Aldo and Volkanovski were once beloved champions, but sadly now they've turned, at times, into meme templates. That's the nature of the game. The same fans who adored them are now poking fun at their expense, spreading memes about their losses, and it kind of stings to see. Their names are not on the pound-for-pound -pound lists anymore, and, and honestly, it's wild to comprehend for the hardcore MMA fans. It makes you realize how momentary fame can be in this sport. Is Alexander Volkanovsky now the featherweight GOAT? I mean, there's been other names in the conversation, but is he the GOAT now? I have Jose Aldo. And, and although he's only a few fights behind Jose in the UFC, the only reason that the 145 pound division is in the UFC is because of Jose Aldo. Here's my argument for Volk. Volk Volkanovsky has beaten Max Holloway three times. He has also beaten Jose Aldo once. He's only two fights behind Jose Aldo, but the, the way that he's been beating these people uh, it showed these finishes that show that he belongs at the top of the list. So does Volk have it in him to reclaim that title? Definitely. It will be really hard to replicate what he did earlier, but he can never be written off. Just like Aldo, Volkanovski is searching for that next opportunity. It's a tough road ahead, but if anyone can navigate it, it's these two warriors. But let's be real, the featherweight division is stacked with hungry contenders. New talent is popping up and the competition is fierce. The future might look a bit bleak for both Aldo and Volkanovski, but their legacies remain solid. I still have him as the, the featherweight guy, you know what I mean? So that's um, just because what he's done for the sport, so many uh, defenses and stuff like that. You know. I'm coming for I'm coming for that status, I'll be, I'll be honest, I'm coming for it, but yeah, nah, he's got it. He's the man, uh, he brought a lot of us here into the sport. Aldo had seven successful title defenses, while Alex had five. So I'm afraid you might be casting them away, but beware, you're talking about two Hall of Famers. They're still respected and held in very high regard by fans and fighters alike. No matter what happens next, they'll always be legends in our eyes. So there you have it, Jose Aldo and Alexander Volkanovsky, two legends with strikingly similar paths and fates in MMA. Their journeys remind us that in this sport, everything can change in a heartbeat, but their legacies will always be a part of the UFC, especially the featherweight division. Can Volk regain the title in the near future, unlike the King of Rio? Who do you think had the better legacy? Let's chat down below, and I will catch you on the next one. In the video on the left, Get ready to witness the Georgian takeover in the UFC. El Matador is up next, facing the pride of Hawaii, Max Blessed Holloway. You might be thinking what island it is, but it is Georgia, a landlocked country making all the noise in the MMA world right now.